Let's talk about KPIs and scorecards for real estate investors. What's up, guys? My name is Ben Day with Lineshare Bookkeeping and Landlord CFO, where we talk about all of the bookkeeping, accounting, finance, back office, and automation you could possibly encounter in the real estate space. So if this is something that you feel like you wish that you would talk about more in your RIAs, in your real estate investing organizations, or even with your mentors, go ahead and uh, like and subscribe to our channel, as well as drop us a comment on what kinds of questions that you have that we can answer for you in this video setting. This week is no different than the usual stuff that we have going on. I want to talk about KPIs and goal setting. What we want to really kind of get into here is how do you actually put together your goals, not just from this like wild and crazy vision mindset, but really truly get into KPIs and what do they mean and how can we be really using them the way that they're meant to be used instead of just having a really adorable like whiteboard somewhere that never gets used with some some big numbers on it, right? So what does this actually mean? How can we begin to get this done? And how can we integrate it with our accounting to make it as easy as possible? So generally speaking, when we're talking about vision and mindset and goal setting, um, it's a whole lot of like, you know, there's a vision board and maybe it's got your lifestyle on there, what you're trying to get done. Uh, and what we like to do first with our vision and one of the big key steps that you should be getting coached on is that there should be a number attached to that vision. It's not enough to just say, oh, I want to spend more time with my family. Like, what does that mean? Does that mean that you want to spend 10 minutes more with them or 10 hours more with them and 10 minutes a day or 10 hours a year or 10 hours a week? Like what is like really get into what that means and really assign numbers to it. And the numbers part is where this immediately becomes a little more complicated for people, but a lot easier for people like me to begin to help you figure this out. Uh, and so once we get into the vision and the goal setting and the numbers, now it comes down to really identifying what numbers do we need to be generating so that we can get the numbers in our goals? If I want to make a million dollars, if that is my goal, is a net worth of a million dollars, how what numbers do I need up front in order to get me there? And the numbers that we're talking about here, whether it's you know 10 hours a week, a million dollars, and what numbers to get there, all of those fall into a category that we call key performance indicators. Uh, now, key performance indicators are the numbers that we can look at and measure and manage to figure out if we're actually hitting our goals and what we're actively doing, where we're slacking, where we're overachieving, all of that stuff. Key performance indicators often get kind of uh, shortened to call, being called KPIs, uh, and that's really what we're diving into today. Now, there's three different ways that we need to begin to approach our KPIs if we really want to grow this business the way that we want to grow it. Number one on our list is leading indicators. This is the stuff that every mentor, every guru, every podcast is going to tell you to really track down is the leading indicators in your real estate business. So uh, I've kind of started telling a story where maybe we want to uh, spend, you know, 10 hours a week more with our family. And that means that we need to have a million dollar net worth so that we can, you know, begin to generate a return and passive income that'll give us back that time. And now we really got to figure out, okay, how do we get get to the million dollar number. And for that, uh, we really need to look at your business. We need to say, okay, what business model are you in? Uh, if you're just in a buy and hold real estate or house flipping or wholesaling or what have you, maybe you just need to be making offers. Uh, maybe if you can commit to making 10 offers a day, uh, you know, whatever your number is, right? If you can make 10 offers a day on real estate deals, you'll be able to hit that million dollar number, right? And so now your 10, 10 offers a day is a number that'll get you to a number that'll get you to your goal, right? And so for us, 10 offers a day is an action step. Like that is something that you can go out and do and you know that you did it or you know that you didn't do it because it's an input. And so that is what we like to call a leading indicator. So what you need to do in your business first and foremost is as you begin to kind of put together your goals and, and, and the number assigned to that, what action are you taking to achieve that goal and how can you really, like, like what number can you assign to it? So uh, maybe it's not just offers. Maybe it's how many offers have you made and how many deals have you analyzed and how many leads have landed on your desk, right? Uh, kind of the, the, the trio of, of numbers that you can get in a marketing sense, right? And so we really like these. The trick 
two leading indicators is that it cannot be about money. As soon as you start thinking that a leading indicator is money, that's when this begins to fall apart. So uh, do not think that, oh, I got to sell $3,000. Like, sure that, yeah, like maybe that's part of the math in here somewhere, but how are you going to sell that $3,000? Is it by just like, going and getting the money or is it going and talking to a whole bunch of people and offering them services for three grand? Uh, or maybe it's getting the leads, right? It's so for us leading indicators, you know, you're doing your lead indicators correctly when it's not a dollar amount, it's an action item. Uh, that's what, and so first things first, if you're trying to hit a goal and you're trying to build your KPIs, figure out what your action items are and what the number is behind that, that you can go and achieve. Second on the list here then is the lagging indicator. So leading indicators are the action items. That's what you know that you're doing. Our lagging indicators then are the results. I took this much action and here are my results. Uh, and those are very helpful in their own sense. So you hear a lot of people talking about, you know, if you just focus on your leading indicators, the lagging indicators will come. That's not always true. Uh, if all you do is make offers all day, all night, over and over and over again, and you keep getting no's or you keep getting yeses, but then you get into the deal and you realize that the deal wasn't as good as you thought and your offer should have been different, your lagging indicators will tell you that. Where the leading indicator says, hey, you are actually doing deals, you are actually figuring this out, your lagging indicators can come back and say, here's how effective this was. And that's where we really get good with our information. And that's also really where your lagging indicators can become financially based. Like if your lagging indicator is to have a million dollars cash in the bank and you're making 10 offers a day and then you just keep losing money, like you are signing deals, like your offers are getting accepted, but your money is going down. Now we know that you're, there's some other action that's happening that we need to change because you're not seeing the results that you wanted to see. Maybe you're signing offers, but they're really bad deals and you're losing money. Or maybe you're making so many offers that you've brought on a team, but now your team is too expensive and you actually need to be doing like 20 offers a day for that team uh, so that your money can start going up, right? There's like a yin and a yang to this. There's balance to be found all over the place. Um, the other really common thing is like, Hey, you're making offers. The offers aren't the problem. The problem is that you keep buying all of your meals out of your business when you're not actually making enough money to afford your grocery bill. Uh, all those steak dinners are going to waste and your cash balance is decreasing, even though you've got all your offers going, right? There's a relationship here on your KPIs that you need to begin to understand. So it is not just making phone calls and it's not just looking at your bank balance. There's a relationship that we need to forge here. Now, Listen, when it comes down to it, everything here is really about the money. At some point, like money isn't everything, but it sure does make things easier. And figuring out how to get your bookkeeping done and the financial statements prepared and the KPIs all presented and, and, and really measure where you're at so you can go take decisive action and then like go to the bank and get a big bank loan or go to a private money lender and get a big money loan from them or save money on your taxes and begin to do all this advanced strategy. There's a lot of pieces here to unpack. So what we've done is we've created a masterclass. You can find the link down below where we talk about how to get your bookkeeping done as quickly as possible, get the financial statements put together and unlock hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars in your business just by dialing in your finance department. You can find that link in the description section below. Now, once we have our leading and lagging indicator set up, the last big piece then is putting them together and what we call a scorecard. A lot of people call this something different. A lot of people have different rules on what this should look like. I'm telling you from my own experience that you can begin to automate large portions of your scorecard and a scorecard can say different things for different people. The point is that you have one, right? So if you're, so to go back on our example here, if you're, you know, making 10 offers a day so that you can have a million dollars in cash in the bank, what we need to be then doing is tracking, okay, how much cash do we have in the bank? And how many offers did we make? And making sure that we're seeing this number go up and down and really controlling that and diving into those numbers if need be. And a scorecard should do that. A scorecard should tell you the highlights of where you're at in your business so that you know where you need to go and focus. If you're hitting all of your offer, like scorecard action items, like you've got all your marketing and your sales and your offers and things are getting accepted, 
but your cash is going down. Now we know we need to go look at our cash balance, figure out why that is the case. Uh, we love scorecards because it's not boring. Scorecards can be really fun. We use a software in our business called Sift Analytics to put together our lagging indicator scorecard for our financial metrics. And that makes it really easy for me and our clients and our team members and everybody to look at the business and say, hey, you're doing really well in these areas and you're not doing so well in these areas. Let's go fix those. And it's as simple as that. It's not a boring spreadsheet. It's not a profit and loss that you have to go get a college degree to understand. It's straight to the point, fun colors. It's awesome. So I really recommend as you're putting together your KPIs and your goals and figuring out your lagging and leading indicators that you also put together an easy way to get a scorecard made up. Maybe it's something that links to your CRM and your accounting software, that would be an easy one and uh, where you can begin to really pull in all of your data in one place so you can see it and make decisions and just get on with your day. This is how KPIs are supposed to work. It's supposed to help drive decision making. We have a trifecta in our business where if we can get the right data and then measure it in a smart way, we can then go take decisive action because we know what the next steps are. Or if you're an entrepreneur and you're action first, you can take a whole lot of action that gives you a whole lot of data that you can then measure smartly to improve your action the next time you go out and decide to take massive, massive action on something. Like the relationship is here, it's ready to go. We just need to be using it appropriately and KPIs are the way to get it done. Let me know in the comment section below uh, what you found the most helpful in this video or what you would like to hear us talk more about. We're always creating new content just for you guys in the finance space. We know it can be complicated. We know it can be boring. And our job is to bring it to you uh, so that you can grow your business. That's where we like to help out. So uh, thank you so much. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe down below, and I will see you in the next video.